the Palace of Westminster serves as the meeting place for both the House of Commons and the House of Lords, the two Houses of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Informally known as the Houses of Parliament, the Palace lies on the north bank of the River Thames in the city of Westminster, in central London, England. Its name, which derives from the neighbouring Westminster Abbey, may refer to several historic structures but most often, the Old Palace a medieval building complex largely destroyed by fire in 1834, or its replacement, the new palace that stands today. The palace is owned by the Crown. Committees appointed by both houses manage the building and report to the Speaker of the House of Commons and to the Lord Speaker. The first royal palace constructed on the site dated from the 11th century, and Westminster became the primary residence of the Kings of England until fire destroyed the royal apartments in 1512. The remainder of Westminster continued to serve as the home of the Parliament of England, which had met there since the 13th century, and also as the seat of the Royal Courts of Justice, based in and around Westminster Hall. In 1834 an even greater fire ravaged the heavily rebuilt Houses of Parliament, and the only significant medieval structures to survive were Westminster Hall, the Cloisters of St. Stephen's, the Chapel of St. Mary Undercroft, and the Jewel Tower. In the subsequent competition for the reconstruction of the palace, the architect Charles Barry won with a design for new buildings in the Gothic Revival style specifically inspired by the English perpendicular Gothic style of the 14th-16th centuries. The remains of the old palace were incorporated into its much larger replacement, which contains over 1,100 rooms organized symmetrically around two series of courtyards and which has a floor area of 112,476 square meters. Part of the new palace's area of 3.24 hectares was reclaimed from the River Thames, which is the setting of its nearly 300-metre-long facade, called the River Front. Augustus Pugin, a leading authority on Gothic architecture and style, assisted Barry and designed the interior of the palace. Construction started in 1840 and lasted for 30 years, suffering great delays and cost overruns as well as the death of both leading architects, works for the interior decoration continued intermittently well into the 20th century. Major conservation work has taken place since then to reverse the effects of London's air pollution, and extensive repairs followed the Second World War, including the simplified reconstruction of the Commons Chamber following its bombing in 1941. The palace is one of the centres of political life in the United Kingdom, Westminster has become a metonym for the UK Parliament and the British Government, and the Westminster system of government commemorates the name of the palace. The Elizabeth Tower, in particular, often referred to by the name of its main bell, Big Ben, has become an iconic landmark of London and of the United Kingdom in general, one of the most popular tourist attractions in the city, and an emblem of parliamentary democracy. Tsar Nicholas I of Russia called the new palace a dream in stone. The Palace of Westminster has been a grade I listed building since 1970 and part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1987. History Tudors The palace was commissioned by Henry VIII on the site of a former leper hospital dedicated to St. James the Less. The new palace, secondary in the king's interest to Henry's Whitehall Palace, was constructed between 1531 and 1536 as a smaller residence to escape formal court life. Much smaller than the nearby Whitehall, St. James's was arranged around a number of courtyards, including the Colour Court, the Ambassador's Court and the Friary Court. The most recognisable feature is the North Gatehouse, constructed with four storeys, the gatehouse has two crenellated flanking octagonal towers at its corners, and a central clock dominating the uppermost floor and gable. The clock is a later addition and dates from 1731. It is decorated with the initials H.A. for Henry and his second wife, Anne Boleyn. 
Henry had the palace constructed in red brick, with detail picked out in darker brick. The palace was remodeled in 1544, with ceilings painted by Hans Holbein and was described as a pleasant royal house. Two of Henry VIII's children died at St. James's, Henry Fitzroy, 1st Duke of Richmond and Somerset, and Mary I. Elizabeth I often resided at the palace and is said to have spent the night there while waiting for the Spanish Armada to sail up the Channel. Stuarts Prince Henry, the son of King James and Anne of Denmark, lived at St. James's Palace until his death in 1612. The gardens were improved for him by Alphonsus Fowle. A riding school, one of the first in England, was built for Henry at St. James's Palace between 1607 and 1609, and then a library with sculptural decoration by Maximilian Colt. Henry also installed a menagerie with pet birds including a pair of ostriches. Charles II was born at the palace on May 29, 1630, his parents were Charles I, who ruled the three kingdoms of England, Scotland and Ireland, and Henrietta Maria, the sister of the French King Louis XIII. James II, the second surviving son of King Charles I and Henrietta Maria, was born at the palace on October 14, 1633. In 1638, Charles I gave the palace to Marie de Medici, the mother of Henrietta Maria. Marie remained in the palace for three years but the residence of a Catholic former Queen of France proved unpopular with Parliament and she was soon asked to leave for Cologne. Charles spent his final night at St. James's before his execution. Oliver Cromwell then took it over, and turned it into barracks during the English Commonwealth period. The palace was restored by Charles II following the demise of the Commonwealth, laying out St. James's Park at the same time. Mary II and Anne Queen of Great Britain, were both born at the palace. It became the principal residence of the monarch in London in 1698, during the reign of William III, after Whitehall Palace was destroyed by fire, and became the administrative centre of the monarchy, a role it retains. Hanoverians The first two monarchs of the House of Hanover used St. James's Palace as their principal London residence. George I and George II both housed their mistresses, the Duchess of Kendal and the Countess of Suffolk respectively, at the palace. In 1757, George II donated the palace library to the British Museum, this gift was the first part of what later became the royal collection. George III found St. James's unsuitable. The Tudor Palace was regarded as uncomfortable and also as not affording its residents enough privacy or the space to withdraw from the court into family life. In 1762, shortly after his wedding, George purchased Buckingham House the predecessor to Buckingham Palace for his queen, Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz In 1809, a fire destroyed part of St. James's Palace, including the monarch's private apartments at the southeast corner. These apartments were not replaced leaving the Queen's Chapel isolated from the rest of the palace by an open area, where Marlborough Road now runs between the two buildings. The royal family began spending the majority of their time at Buckingham House, with St. James's used for only formal occasions, thrice weekly levies and public audiences were still held there. In the late 18th century, George III refurbished the state apartments but neglected the living quarters. Queen Victoria formalized the move in 1837, ending the status of St. James's as the primary residence of the monarch, it became used during her reign as a venue for courts, levies and other ceremonies. It was nevertheless where Victoria married her husband, Prince Albert, in 1840, and where, 18 years later, their eldest child, Princess Victoria married her husband. Prince Frederick of Prussia. 20th century. In 1912-1913 it was the venue for the international conference that arranged the treaty between the Balkan states and Turkey following the two Balkan wars. 
Edward VIII when Prince of Wales used the palace as his town residence until he moved into Marlborough House, and George VI as Duke of York resided there prior to his marriage in 1923. The second round table conference, pertaining to Indian independence, was held at the palace. On June 12, 1941, representatives of the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, and of the exiled governments of Belgium, Czechoslovakia, Greece, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, and Yugoslavia, as well as General de Gaulle of France, met and signed the Declaration of St. James's Palace, which was the first of six treaties signed that established the United Nations and composed the Charter of the United Nations. Proclamation Gallery the Proclamation Gallery is a part of St. James's Palace, and it is used after the death of a reigning monarch. The Accession Council meets to declare the new monarch. Once the monarch has made a sacred oath to the council, the Garter King of Arms steps onto the Proclamation Gallery, which overlooks Friary Court to proclaim the new monarch. Such an event last occurred on September 10, 2022 at the Proclamation of King Charles III. To allow the Garter King of Arms and the Trumpeters access to the balcony, workers removed the center window the prior day and installed a temporary door. Today, St. James's Palace is still a working palace, and the royal court is still formally based there, despite the monarch residing elsewhere. It is also the London residence of Princess Anne, Princess Beatrice, and Princess Alexandra. The palace is used to host official receptions such as those of visiting heads of state, and charities of which members of the royal family are patrons. It forms part of a sprawling complex of buildings housing court offices and officials' apartments. The immediate palace complex includes York House, the former home of Charles III and his sons, Princes William and Harry. Lancaster House, located next door, is used by home government for official receptions, and the nearby Clarence House, the former home of the Queen Mother, was the residence of Charles, Prince of Wales, he continues to live there as King Charles III. The palace also served as the official residence of Princess Eugenie until April 2018. The nearby Queen's Chapel, built by Inigo Jones, adjoins St. James's Palace. While the Queen's Chapel is open to the public at selected times, the Chapel Royal and the Palace is not accessible to the public. They both remain active places of worship. The offices of the Royal Collection Department, the Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps, the Central Chancery of the Orders of Knighthood, the Chapel Royal, the Gentlemen at Arms, the Yeomen of the Guard, and the King's Watermen are all housed at St. James's Palace. Since the beginning of the 20 hundreds, the Royal Philatelic Collection has been housed at St. James's Palace, after spending the entire 20th century at Buckingham Palace. On June 1, 2007, the Palace, Clarence House, and other buildings within its curtilage were designated as a protected site for the purposes of Section 128 of the Serious Organized Crime and Police Act 2005, making it a specific criminal offense for a person to trespass into the site. See also Court of St. James's Official Royal Residences in London Palace of Westminster The principal residence of the English kings from 1049 until 1530 Palace of Whitehall The principal residence of the English kings from 1530 until 1689 Kensington Palace the principal residence of English and later British monarchs between 1689 and 1760. Bushy House future William IV took up residence here in 1797 when appointed Ranger of Bushy Park, and remained through his reign as King rather than St. James's or Buckingham. Buckingham Palace the principal royal residence since 1837.